I know it's always hard to wait, but it's a good thing to test your patience sometimes. Like waiting for something worthwhile. Like it's aptly said, pray, believe, wait. Everything happens at the right time. Everything worthwhile is worth the wait. So is this much awaited episode. The heading dancing in fonts as the plasma half-life of the drug. Such an important discussion. Welcome all to Is Pharmacology Difficult podcast. I'm your host Dr. Radhika Vijay, MBBS MD Pharmacology and this is the audio hub to get the best simplified basic tips, strategies, methods and lots of ideas to learn better, understand better and make your concepts crystal clear. If you really find and if there's a question hovering in your minds, is pharmacology difficult? Lend me your ears for a while and let in the magic of knowledge. Let's start by revising the definition of plasma half-life. It's defined as the time duration taken by the drug to reduce its plasma concentration by 50% or half of the original value. I hope you get it and that's really simple. Actually the whole concept can be really well understood by simply imagining the body as a single compartment. So the drug having first order elimination kinetics and rapid one compartment distribution for those drugs the plasma concentration time curve will be possessing two types of slopes i have already discussed so you will be revising it and you'll remember it so soon the two types of slopes are the alpha slope and the beta slope the beta half-life that is the elimination half-life is in general day-to-day terms in our colloquial language what we refer to as the only half-life right yes But this is a hypothetical concept. Why? What happens usually is that the drug possesses multi-compartment distribution and multi-exponential decay of the plasma concentration time plot. In most of the cases, most relevant considerable T-half or the plasma half-life is the one which is calculated over a steady-state plasma concentration range. Now I will tell you an equation which will help to calculate the formula for the plasma half-life, which actually you should know. So, the elimination rate constant, referred to as the small k or sometimes also as the capital K, is equal to the clearance, referred to as the capital C, capital L, whole upon, divided by, volume of distribution, referred to as capital V. And the formula for the plasma half-life or the t-half is equal to the natural log of 2 upon capital K or small k whatever you refer to the elimination rate constant as. Now you might be knowing the values of the log 2 that is 0.693 so what does the equation turn out to be for the plasma half-life is equal to 0.693 into volume of distribution divided by clearance of the drug. So we simply infer that the half-life is a parameter derived from two variables. What are these two variables? I just told you that a volume of distribution and the clearance. And as the volume of distribution and the clearance, they are variable. They are not constant. So what do you get out of this knowledge? That plasma half-life is not exact determinant of the drug elimination but it's a well-known fact that almost complete drug elimination takes four to five half-lives that is around 93.75 percent of drug is eliminated in around four to five half-lives and you all know very well that in the first order kinetics the plasma half-life or the t half is constant and volume of distribution and clearance they are not varying with the dose while in the zero order kinetics the plasma half-life or the t half it varies with the dose and the clearance also varies so it becomes quite a wasteful concept yes you cannot apply it nicely for zero order kinetics drugs 
Now, as our talk deepens and progresses, I want to talk about some basic ideas or some basic concepts, which if thoroughly understood can be summarized sensibly. So in this direction, first and foremost, let's talk about the repeated drug administration and that is really quite simple. If a drug is repeatedly administered, it starts accumulating in the body and the steady state level is attained. A good generalized equation given is that steady state plasma concentration referred to as capital C, small p, small s and small s that is CPSS is equal to the dose rate upon the clearance of the drug. And the dose rate and the steady state plasma concentration graph plot it turns out to be linear in the first order kinetics so you if you don't really remember that you can write it down somewhere and it is not linear in the zero order kinetics okay so that is for your remembrance and your good information now is the golden moment reached to well understand the plateau principle Say you keep on repeating the drug administration before the fourth half-life is reached. Then the drug not only reaches a good evident peak of drug effect, but it, there is added left of a dose in the body. At the point when increasing the rate of elimination balances the amount constantly administered then what we get or what is attained is a steady state plateau. You can actually coin a term for this principle and it is known as the plateau principle. That's quite a famous term so do remember that. Now added on concepts are quite a few but let's not have them go in vain. Let's know them. Let's pay some heat to them. The first point. There may be a difference in maximum and minimum levels of dose if small doses are frequently repeated. I hope that is quite well understood. If you keep on repeating small doses, there may be a quite a lot difference in the maximum and the minimum dose levels. Okay, second point. There is a true compromise of dose intervals amongst the clinically acceptable fluctuating amplitudes and the convenient dosing frequencies. What do you infer out of this? That is, you have to do a compromise in your convenience of your dosing frequencies and what is actually clinically acceptable. So you just have to do a little compromise in between these two. Third point, for orally administered drugs, steady state reaches one third way between the minimum and the maximum dose levels. Got it? Now that's a simple fact. There's nothing to explain about it. Fourth point. By changing the dose rate, new steady state takes more 4 to 5 half lives to set properly. That if you're changing the dose rate, then you think in 4 to 5 half lives everything gonna set out right. No, it's gonna take additional 4 to 5 half lives and that will take a lot of your time, right? Okay, now there are more points that need to be well understood, but without prolonging the length of this episode, I plan to break the chain of sensible sentences here and just now. And just to remind you that plasma half-life and associated concepts of the dose types, the dosing schedules, actually gonna make it a couple of few more episodes in future. At your end is demanded a little patience, a little wait, wait for the worthy, right? and a lot of curiosity and zest to know it all every bit of it that's the true essence of a true student a true learner if you wanted the most there's actually no easy way out because that's the way it is for all the updates and latest episodes of my podcast please visit www.ispharmacologydifficult.com where you can also sign up for a free monthly e-newsletter of mine it actually contains a lot of updates about medical sciences, drug information updates, and my podcast updates also. You can follow me on different social media handles like Twitter, Insta, Facebook, and LinkedIn. They all are with the same name. It's Pharmacology Difficult. If you are listening for the first time, well, are you? I don't think so. 
If you are, do subscribe and follow whatever platform you are consuming this episode. Stay tuned. Do rate and review on iTunes Apple Podcast. Stay safe. Stay happy. Stay enlightened. Thank you.